Welcome to Blighty Day Fiance. This mm-hmm. is the only reality show recap podcast hosted by a married, yes. monogamous, Absolutely. heterosexual, mm-hmm. um, what else is there? Transatlantic. Yep. Um, badly bowled, <laughs> irritably bowled couple. Irritable. We are the Irritable Bowel Syndicate. We are. Um, we're in London. Michelle's American. I'm not. Um, I am not her first British husband, and she is not. <laughs> His first American wife. Yeah. Um, so, now that we've had that brief introduction, <laughs> and we are going to keep it brief, oh, yeah. um, we had our very first Patreon YouTube live patreon.com slash blighty day. Um, and we wanted to open with a message from our dear friend, Megan, who will tell you a little bit more about it. Hi everyone. It's Megan Taylor here. I'm here because the blighty day bays just had their first YouTube live and it was a blast. But at the end, there was kind of a surprise, or it was a surprise to me, a contest, and I somehow won. So um, Michelle had to come up with a prize and stipulations, and she semi-panically said, "Um, you can say anything you want to say on the podcast, but it can't be racist. So um, here I am. I uh, wasn't planning on being racist anyway, but uh, not being racist. Um, but what I really want to say is I want to thank Michelle for her friendship. When I first heard her and Robin on Reality Gaze, I can't really explain it, but I felt a sort of an instant connection to her. Do you know how that have you ever felt that feeling? And so I DM'd her and said, I think we're going to be friends. And um, we are. Um, I so admire her for talking about things that have gone on in her past and in her very recent past and um, other things that she's been going through. Um, I think she's opening some doors. Anyway, I hope to see all of you on the next YouTube Live, and have a great day. Okay, love you all. Bye. Oh, boy. How, I mean, that's just almost too lovely. Um, Usually, we have a rule against self-regarding nonsense, but, you know... Megan won the contest. She gets to say whatever she wants, and she chose love. She chose love. Um, you, too, could have a message played out. I think we'll do it all the time when we do these YouTube lives. It was really good fun. If you want to join those, um, please join our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash blighty day. Um, it's another way of getting rid of the pesky ads that you might have noticed on this podcast. Um, obviously, adverts are a wonderful thing. Um, I recommend that you buy at least five of everything that's advertised in this podcast today. Um, but if you do hate ads, uh, the Patreon is the way to go. We also do lots of shows there, um, such as, Michelle? We do a weekly date blight episode where we talk about a show that we're not covering on the main feed. So um, we've been doing a mix of letting people choose the show yeah. and choosing it ourselves at the last minute. But uh, Love After Lockup is one that's on there. We also watch Below Deck. We haven't done a recap of that yet, but um, I'm sure we will at some point because we watch so much of it. Um, but y- you know, you never know. Yeah. Whatever's around. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up with Darcy and Stacey. I think we'll do one of those. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. We love them. So join the Patreon, um, stay on this here feed. Uh, not only for this, we are also, um, we're going to try and get these ones out, hopefully Tuesdays, maybe Thursdays. Um, it all depends on various things We're you know, <laughs> we've got lives just, um, so that's earlier in the week. Later every week at the moment, we are doing Married at First Sight Australia, which um, I think everyone in the world has seen by now, right? If you haven't, <laughs> 
give it a shot. Um, I believe there are some previous seasons on Lifetime mm-hmm. that uh, you might be able to access. Uh, if you are unable to watch the current season, that is, you're not based in Australia, try uh, pretending that you are. Yeah, by that we don't mean like barbecuing all your food and wearing cork hats. Um, try and make the internet think you are. Just ask it nicely. You... Go to our Facebook group, um, Blighty Day Bays, for more information on that. Mm. That is all the housekeeping, if I'm not very much mistaken, patreon.com slash Blighty Day. You will also find on the Patreon, at the $10 tier, a riveting series, the very sexy, salacious, and sinful <laughs> history of the royal, the British royal family uh, past and present, very distant past, that I do with my friend, Elliot, who is something of an expert in that area. Um, And uh, he's got all the inside information that Mm -hmm. you've been dying to know about because he moves in those circles. Um, Sometimes I think that he is a time traveler, but, you know, cannot confirm nor deny he knows too much detail from like a hundred years yeah he does (laughs) i mean it's genuinely weird it's like and such as such who was wearing brown socks that day and you're like elliot you're just odd um but you know it's it's good listening um right that is enough of all that nonsense we are here for nice day the other way which i think I think it might be the best of the franchise, if I'm honest. Um, before can be really good, can't it? Yeah, but let's get going. Right. So first we have Chris from Haleyville, Alabama. Chris is 40 years old. She's been married and divorced twice. She's got two kids and she feels more herself when in costume. Yeah, she feels half her age. Uh, I didn't think she was 40 when I saw her wearing that costume. Later on, when I saw the effect that a hard life can have on a person, oh. maybe I bought it more because, boy, she's been through it. But, yeah, it's it's quite weird. It's There's something there. I think we're going to discover even more awful things that have sort of held her back in that way. Yeah, it's really, so... Again, like, these shows, sometimes you're just watching trauma playing out, and then, like, it, it's not a whodunit, it's a what was done. And you you have this creeping feeling that over the next, like, 60 weeks or whatever, you're just going to hear more and more, but hey-ho. It's incredibly, it's staggering, really, that her dream home <laughs> is basically... a almost a pile of ashes yeah it reminds me who are the who are the, the ones that were caught in like the um tsunami oh yeah that was um ellie and uh i'm really sorry i don't remember his name that's fine i threw it at you but it's like a similar thing in a way it's like whoa at least they weren't gonna live there yeah i, I i'm unclear about the old uh, real estate portfolio, but at least yeah. um, she has a source of income having quit both her jobs. Um, she has, Chris has narcolepsy, so she has memory problems um, and I guess falls asleep. Uh, her brain doesn't know when it's time to sleep. Now, I remember back in the day, they used to say that Kurt Cobain had narcolepsy. And then the received wisdom is that there was no such thing as narcolepsy and it was like an invented kind of condition. I mean, this is what I remember hearing. But hearing her talking about it, I'm like, oh, it does actually exist. So can you let us know? I mean, I know I could Google it, but anyone that's got any experience with narcolepsy, I want the inside track on that because it it sounds awful. Um, And I'm sure it's I'm sure it exists. I mean, you wouldn't be on TV saying it otherwise, right? Well, she struck me as a fellow neurodivergent. Mm. Um, The costumes, the sort of, um, you know, discomfort in her own skin and possibly, I I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I I only have my lived experience. Um, 
as an autistic person, but I, I think there might be some of that in there. Very sad um, that she has essentially had to hide who she is and and who she loved for for a very long time. Yeah, I we did a little preview of this, and I was like, first genuine lesbian couple on the show, because Stephanie doesn't count. Um, and I was really hoping that we'd get, you know, like a, a, a Kenny um, kind of story, and that it would actually be a nice thing, and it would be genuine. And, and look, I don't know about that, and I don't know about this relationship, boy, oh boy, but like what I really loved was her mum. Really loved her mum. Yep, her mom believes it's Heavenly Father's job to judge, not theirs. Who hears that this day and age? Right, right. And actually, I think I'll, I'll go on the record as saying it's really nice to have like a representation of Christianity, particularly, but any religion which is open minded on TV these days. Right. Mm-hmm. I just think it's really nice. It was just unbelievably refreshing. It's a Christian who actually practices Christianity, yeah. I think, is is yeah. what you're trying to say. But yeah. I no, I like that. Well, I like well, her well, style. But the thing is, I'm sure millions do. They just don't get on TV anymore. Sure. Yeah. And certainly not on this show. No. Um, so, Jamie is her uh, Venezuelan paramour. Um, like many uh, young people of her generation, Jamie had left Venezuela um, because there were no jobs, and she she wanted to live her truth, and she didn't want to be in a country that was hostile toward um, homosexuals. She does not like sex with men. She never had orgums. No. Um, I don't Which usually. Is a, it's a gluten free. Flower brand. Um, <laughs> I don't. I'm not fond either. I prefer Shaw. I I don't normally make, but she made fun of herself for that. So um, <laughs> something that I really now, I hate to say it. I really don't want to be this person. Uh, I I am a tad suspicious of her. I'll I'll go into that in a minute, but I really liked that she talked about going to therapy and learning in therapy that she was a lesbian. Um, we rarely have people on this show who invest in their mental health. Yeah, who've like been to therapy first. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to this relationship is a shit show, we should do couples therapy one time. Yeah. 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 Now, where things get a little muddy for me. Well, I'll tell you where they got muddy for me before you tell me. Okay. That changing room. Is that a normal thing? To like <laughs> have someone like relentlessly fitting an odd undergarment? Yes. For that long? Yes, absolutely. I know bras get fitted, but it didn't look like there was a lot of adjustment to be done on that. I don't know what to tell you. I just felt a bit bad for the shop assistant. I felt that she was earning her wages that day. She probably really enjoys doing it, and she's probably like... I, so I have found, in my very limited experience going into sex shops, not because I have any, you know, natural aversion <laughs> to them, but... Was it a sex shop? I think it probably was. Oh, sex shop people are really, really open. Yeah, and they're always really nice, yeah. and I think it's really good to you know have some have people who are knowledgeable, and you know you sometimes it really is worth going into a store and talking to someone about what your needs are, and they listen in a non judgmental way and go, "Oh, you should try this because you know the stuff that works for one person." Or the stuff that works for a lot of people. Like, you know those rabbit vibrators? Don't mm. care for them at all. Not your thing. No, I don't I don't like any, uh, f for reasons that I'm sure you understand completely, <laughs> I don't like anything that looks like a penis but isn't right. a penis. <laughs> I used to, she won't be listening, I used to go out with a girl who... She better not be listening. Yeah. Who was obsessed with objects. I mean, she re she didn't really care for <laughs> anything organic, if I'm honest. It, it had to be inert. Um, 
But yeah, so she would have been absolutely fine. Very different. I've yeah. said too much. No, I, I look. I but she I'm, went on about it <laughs> quite a lot. Yeah, actually, I had a friend who, um, whose ex was also into objects, and then he was like, "Yeah, I mean, the can opener, the <laughs> <laughs> you know, the ladle," and then I'm like. How did you make this lasagna? I need to go home like right now. It's not the thing and never yeah, right? eat here again. <laughs> yeah. What are we having? Siki? I think not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you would have thought I'd be that would be fun and stuff, and I'd want to get involved in that in some way. And I would have thought that myself, but like the fervor was a bit off putting. I would. Did she like want? To demonstrate that to you I, I a would, lot or just, just talk about it? Yeah, I just kind of pretended that she, I mean, now I look back on it, I was sort of denying her her sexuality, really. I should have embraced her and been a bit more open, but I think I got the ick, if I'm honest. It was just a bit much. It's a perfectly reasonable thing, but I don't know. When you're with someone, I don't know if you should emphasize, like so often and so strongly how inanimate is you're gonna have to be <laughs> your jam you're gonna have to be specific now because i i don't know what that means was she saying like oh I, that carrot looks really big or whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right okay we'll leave it there car wow <laughs> no i don't know no, i did i saw a documentary about men who had you know relations with cars there's someone who's like married to the berlin wall there's someone who's yeah, like people that in a relationship with the eiffel tower i don't know if she went that far i she probably has now yeah yeah upgraded um anyway uh so chris disappeared for 20 days with no real explanation i that didn't get cleared up much beyond that. So there was an in-betweener, an interloper who came through, and I imagine this is like someone who looked like Cherry Jones riding like a Mustang. <laughs> like, hey, little lady. Well, just because she's from Texas. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fine. So there was an overlap. In my head, it was Daisy Duke. I know it's the wrong state, but yeah. Okay. We've all got our southern stereotypes. Maybe it was Penelope Pitstop. Help! And she did. Well, t this Texan lady, who in my head is Cherry Jones on a on a horse, um, <laughs> she t she ended up getting in touch with Chris and told Chris that Jamie was a scammer and a cheater. Mm. Um, so it's this third person who we don't hear from directly that, you know, is the source of, of some angst here. It was quite weird. I was thinking we do need this woman on camera. Yeah, I Cherry think Jones so. Cherry Jones has to appear at some point on the tell-all or something, because I don't know, there's a lot of different versions of this story. And, and like, did she ghost? Was, was it the narcolepsy? Uh, had a house burned down again? I mean, there are reasons my, why you might go off the radar, you know, when you're having a long-distance relationship for 20 days. I said that I didn't find that quite so shocking, and your jaw hit the ground. You were like, that is way beyond the pale. But it, shit happens in people's lives. I don't know. So the only person who ghosted me for 20 days that I... that you know, the relationship survived was my ex before you. And it was literally because <laughs> he was hiking in the Himalayas, like in Nepal, where right. there was <laughs> there was no way of it's contacting really, me. It's not really ghosting, is it? That's just a telecommunication snafu. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't know where... I mean, I knew where he was. I didn't know that it was... I, I guess I hadn't thought about it that much. We just watched the movie Fall, didn't we, tonight? Yeah. Yeah, where two girls are stuck up a giant pole, which my ex might have been interested in, actually. Um, 
And, you know, they couldn't get in touch with people, but, you know, no one felt that they ghosted them. They were just stuck up a big pole. Robin, you're being strange. I, I know that for a very small group of our listeners, you like it when I get angry at Robin. He certainly <laughs> likes it. Otherwise, he wouldn't drive me up the chimney every day. Every day. All right. So, um, look, I don't see how this is going to end well for either of them. I don't trust... Jamie, I don't think she... I, look, I know she's done a lot of work on herself. She has a very cute dog. I just don't see yeah. where the overlap is for these two. And it, and it bothers me that neither of them have been in a relationship with a with a woman before. Okay, it bothers me that they're getting married after, what is it, six days, nine days? Yeah. Like, no. There's delusion there. It's too much. There's denial and delusion. It's too much. It's too much. Like, go meet each other, spend some time. We had the same thing with uh, 90 Defarc and and our Scottish friends, didn't we? Yeah. Right? And and, and that was like, you know, should Oh, he... congratulations to them, by the way. Did they get married? Yeah, they did. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful you wedding, yeah. What were their names? Callum and... Damn it. Oh, Marvin. Marvin, yes. I got one. I never get them. Um, but yeah, for ages, it was like, oh, Callum's really rushing into this. It's like, well, the guy has at least come over, <laughs> right? They are at least meeting and stuff and just getting engaged. This is getting married. Yeah, it's... After you've never... I'll be completely crude about it. Look, some people will save sex for after marriage, but they don't strike me that they're doing that for these reasons. It's like, you know, some physical, co even a kiss. I mean, hmm. Something that really bothers me about these dating shows is that nobody talks about the ick factor yeah. with somebody who, I mean, it happened to me, so I know... It's happened to other people. Sometimes you meet someone in person who on paper is great, but you just don't yeah. have, like, I, I went out with this guy once who, again, on paper, you know, great job, good looking, very funny, you know, charming, warm, all the rest. And my friend, <laughs> my friend <laughs> Chelsea said, there's a bloodlessness to him, isn't uh -huh. there? And God, she was right. And I couldn't you can't un unsee it. Nope, I couldn't yeah. unsee it. And yeah. it and it was, it was like And you would have seen it eventually. But when he kissed me, there was like mm. nothing there. Mm. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how people now, sometimes work with the, that. The weird little things about someone are the things that you fall in love with. They're, they're like the, the, the grips for love, right? The handholds, the little, little idiosyncrasies, right? Yeah. I don't think you can fall in love with someone unless they've got a few of those to grab hold of. But just as likely, those things can just ick you out and send you running, right? What if Jamie has got horrible breath? Um, I, I, sorry, that's a bit Big Ed and Rose, isn't it? Jesus, yeah. yeah. No, don't we know. don't know. It could be anything. That's the cliche, because look, things like that can be resolved and it's fine. But there could be something, right? She, I don't know. She might pick her nose and eat it. <laughs> there could just be something about them where you go, oh, oh, maybe not, right? Right. Um. So, yeah, not spectacularly high hopes for these two. Jen and Rishi. So Jen is 46. Um, Rishi is 32 and a personal trainer slash fitness model. She's a farmer, I think. I sort of missed that, but she's a, she's a bit of a... She's, she's lived a life. I got a bit worried when I saw her on the ranch with the animals because it reminded me of uh, Japanese Ellie. Yeah, I don't think um you mean weeaboo yeah, Ellie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Oh, she was into Japanese things and then in, ended up with a Chinese guy, but it yes. didn't it didn't matter to her. It's all the same, right? Well, it didn't work. Yeah. Anyway. Um yeah, so she's got a track record for falling for the wrong kind of guys. 
They met at a hotel where he was now okay. <laughs> Y'all, there is no modeling gig in at a, a hotel. hotel. If somebody tells you, if if you are a model, if you are a part-time model even, and someone says, oh, there's this thing at this hotel, don't go because <laughs> they're going to traffic you. Yeah, it's the Hotel California. Uh, you will never leave. And if you do, you'll be inside a suitcase. It's not good. It's not good, y'all. No. Um, he was not modeling. He was escorting. He was, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's, look, there is no judgment about sex work, okay? Nope. We are very sex positive here. Mm-hmm. Very, very sex positive, okay? But uh, he was not modeling. Um, it's not about the sex or paying for the sex. It's about the the kind of the dishonesty and the kind of let's pretend it's something else. That That's kind of what irks me a little bit. Yeah. And he's, I mean, he's just, there's not much there, I'm afraid. No. Okay. Um, Do we think that she hired him? The honest truth of the story. Because no, I she's don't. Like, I didn't really like him very much, but then we hung out for a few days. And I'm like, well, that doesn't happen. If no. you don't like someone, you don't spend some days with them. It's just. Well, I. That's the thing. Yeah. I. I think that she. I think he tried to pick her up, um, and she said no. Mm. Like I believe that, and then they, yeah, they probably did hang out a lot because he was probably always consistent at the hotel bar so you, you know d- you don't think that she hired him no i do not okay um anyway he proposed like a month later they haven't seen each other since before covid two long years that is a lot uh and she is moving to india now her our second covid storyline because we didn't mention it but of course that was the thing that that jamie had covid didn't she and nearly died. well did she <laughs> yeah. we don't know we don't know right um jen's brother who i have as tim or mike didn't catch his <laughs> didn't catch his name because well i think i said he is literally a combination yeah, he of does. tim and mike so you've just written that down as if that's his name yeah, yeah well which is good. might as well be but he, he i've never seen anyone literally do side eye it was incredible he he was literally side eyeing her through that whole conversation and she also um seems to have a rather unfortunate habit of leaving video messages about loving herself enough to let him go mm. that was I have to give her kudos, kudos, okay? (laughs) Because I would be so humiliated and would never want anyone on to see that on television. Yeah, she shared that with the producers. Yeah, Uh, she probably said, you know, we split up. I sent a message. The producers were like, "Could we? Could we maybe?" broadcast that <laughs> and you know open and honest and loving girl that she is she was like sure go for it um i like her she, i like her too she's very beautiful um yeah she looks she reminds me of brandy glanville i don't know who that is you will one day um don't <laughs> don't worry about that wow yeah but she uh well she's like one of my favorite housewives she's ah. in the top of the pantheon ah. oh no i do i do hang on is she on um traitors yeah she was on traitors ah. she left early on although there are reports that she might have um, been engaging in some inappropriate behavior that I do not approve of. Sexual harassment is not okay ever, ever, ever. Um, I will leave that there. Look, not a whole lot to say. Uh, did he? Or the only reason I mention her looks is because usually when people look abroad for their love, on shows like that, like the, the traditional storyline is someone, I don't know, and I don't really like these terms, but like they're kind of shooting out of their league, right? They're yeah, going but for she someone much better. younger, but she mm. is better looking than he is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He works out. And for a minute, like before, we thought he had the... Yeah, um, for a second, he looked like Naveen Andrews, but he yeah, really... Yeah, does not, does not, does but not. Actually, his face ain't all that. She, I don't know. 
She, I don't see it. I, I think she's gorgeous, and mm. I, I also she could have her pick, couldn't she? I know. I and I don't really see what these two have in common. No, like I don't see. I, I mean, I guess I will have to see them together. Yeah, to really get a sense of it. So you know, jury's out for the time being. Now. Gabriel, age 32, is from Margate, not our Margate, but Margate, Florida. We've got our own Margate. We were going to go there, weren't we, last month? Didn't happen. We were going to go for a beautiful weekend away, and then it was torrential downpour. Yeah, it was awful. But you don't um, get that in Florida. Anyway, um, I really like Gabriel. We spent quite a lot of time with him. You know I love a social entrepreneur. My dad... Um, was one, may he rest in power, um, and was a mentor to many. Uh, we, so, we didn't just like him, we loved him. So Gabriel makes... No, your dad, Gabriel. Well, we love my dad, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah clearly. Gabriel but. makes undergarments for female-to-male trans people. Which I thought was absolutely brilliant. And inspired and so interesting. Yeah. Um, because I had never thought about that before. Like, if, I, like what what you would have to... I mean, it's a lot. Like, binding the chest, I imagine, if that's something one needs to do. But having to wear a harness and the, mm. the packer, mm. um, that's a lot. It's easier the other way, isn't it? Because, you know, chicken fillets in a bra, right? That's, you know, you're wearing a bra. It's designed to hold things, you know? But, sure. But underpants are not designed to hold things. They're supposed to be attached, really. You know, if they're going to stay there. So that's just completely, you know, really inspired. I love it when people see, like, gaps in the market like that. Yeah, and, and especially for social and, good. Yeah. yeah, really cool. Um, So he met Isabel on a trip to Colombia to find a supplier. And now they live together or he lives with her part-time in Medellin and he is going to move there permanently. Do you still think it's Medellin because of, um, what was the show? Oh, Entourage. Yeah. No, that's why I said Medellin. <laughs> I know you got it right, but it was always Medellin on that show. No, it was Medellin. <laughs> It's a fucking what about terrible Meta show. Ian? Ugh. I know, but that guy, I can't believe he quit acting because he was so good. He was good, yeah. He was great. Hmm. Did he did he quit like um uh, you know the kid in Game of Thrones? Yeah, he just retired. He was like, I'm gonna go out on a high. Oh, okay. Which I respect. Hmm. Um Yeah, so look. They met. We don't get to meet Isabel in this episode. Um, Gabe talks to his cousins, to his cousin, Florida man. Hello, irrelevant Florida man. Um, <laughs> no, thank you for your stupid opinion. Yeah. Um, I think there's another family in Florida you'd fit into. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean... I hate these ill-informed, because the fact of the matter is, Gabe could be dating any woman. Mm -hmm. He could be dating a woman in Florida who worked for him. him. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you heard that story, right? right? You know, they work together, then they fall in love, then they yeah. have, you know, who but cares? At this stage, aren't they just really business partners? Like, she is providing a really important service to his business and receiving money because she's working. Oh, I'm sorry. We shouldn't pay foreigners for their work. You know, perish that thought. What, she's got your money? Yeah, like she's doing business. Ugh, that guy is like the human embodiment of socks with sandals. Mm -hmm. And that's how much... Um, you know, weight I give his ill-informed and probably also xenophobic opinion. It did ring that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But nice to know those old tropes of they're just after you for your money. She just wants a green card. Um, but at least on on the other way, we don't get so much of they just want a green card. I suppose. Well, 
now is Gabe maybe rushing into it? I think yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, is there a need for a tattoo on the arm? Probably not. Oh, why not? Um, I loved his sister. Oh, me too. <laughs> she was great. She was savage. Savage. And you kept thinking she was going to like break into a smile and go, I'm not kidding. But she wasn't kidding. She was just properly going. But no. She was so forensic with her burns. I absolutely loved it. She roasted it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I have saved the worst for last. Oh, boy. I am, of course, talking about Danielle and Johan. Now, we talked about these two quite a bit in our little preview episode. Um where do I even begin with this woman? Well, do you begin in the uh, Dominican Republic or do you begin in New York? Um, probably New York, I guess, you know, <laughs> she is, um, she loves New York, but she hates the grind. And in her opinion, the biggest issue in her marriage, and it is a marriage is deciding where to live uh she will be the one making that decision yeah yeah unilaterally as it happens yeah um but like any good narcissist she when he confronts her about it she says i'm allowed to change my mind yeah i don't have to involve you in changing my mind or listen to your opinion or reflect on how it might affect you or bear in mind the fact that you might have like made plans and done things or turned down other opportunities or the fact that you sort of thought that your life was heading in a certain way and now uh because you've changed your mind everything is just smashed into a wall uh you don't have to do that um no because agency right <laughs> now uh i know i mentioned our patreon before but i i just want to be clear um we do accept most forms of payment we cannot accept manifested as no, a no we as don't a form of we payment don't accept manifestation uh there is no tier for that no, no. no. so so we're we're, we deeply apologize you know we're working on it but uh you know danielle doesn't uh, she doesn't worry about what ifs, um, you know, so she, it'll happen because she, she wants it to happen. And that, that's the way these things go. I just, I find her so exhausting. Yeah. She is, she's an energy vampire and people who, and believe me, I have worked in the wellness industrial complex. I, <laughs> I was a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. I've done bits and pieces. Look, I I get this. I love my crystals. I'm woo-woo as you like, you know? What do you think she brings to the uh, wellness industrial complex that a thousand other people couldn't? What, what do you think her thing is that makes her successful in that field? I think she's probably really good at marketing. That's the answer to that. Okay. I do, think she markets think she herself really well. Yeah, well, I think she probably is. Yeah. Do, you, do you think she could make a living doing it via Zoom from the beach? Um, probably not. No. I think she'd have to host retreats and like make all of her money during the winter doing retreats. But see, before you even do that, you need that client base. Yeah. It's really dumb because it, you know what she should do? She, should, she should, stay should be in New York, York part time, yep. build up that client base and then get people to come over to the, yep. to the DR. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, my favorite thing that she says in this entire thing, in this entire episode is, that's not an accurate belief. <laughs> yeah. What a way to say that you lied to someone. That is not an accurate belief. Yeah. Now, Johan, God bless him, is from a small village. He barely speaks English. I loved him. But he is learning. Oh, the learning was brilliant. The dog was like, ah. I don't think you're ever going to get this guy. I'm going to go over it. He likes everything about Danielle, and he says that they understand each other despite their differences. Now, again, and I cannot say this enough, she 
admits that she agreed to apply for a visa for yeah. him, but and she changed her mind. And didn't tell him that. And look, it would be fine for her to have second thoughts about things. I don't actually have an issue with that. And also, if she hadn't said that she was going to apply, it would be, I think, fine for her not to have just done it. Sure. But uh, she made a decision for both of them on his behalf without his input. And here's the thing, and I know you disagree about this. She she thinks that he has some naive idea yeah. about what life in America would be like. And he might. I no, I he, dispute that. Mm. I dispute that. He says that he knows people who have gone to the US. I think he under I don't think he's naive. I think he understands very well that he's going to be scrubbing toilets yeah. or picking strawberries or whatever. Yeah, I'm saying he may be a little naive about how, even with that hard work and stuff, you know, but it, there may be some naivety. I mean, like, it's a fine line between like having a dream and being naive, right? I can back his degree of naivety. Her naivety is overwhelming. Yeah, she doesn't get it. Because you can live in New York. You can do it. <laughs> like, she has been doing it, right? She's one year away from getting another 15 grand a year on her pension. She can do it. They can live there. And the fact that she thinks, I mean, the hubris to say that that money isn't going to make that much money isn't going to make a difference to me when I'm 60. You don't know what kind of health problems you're going to have. You don't know what life... And she's talking about having a kid with him, and, mm -hmm. and she's saying that amount of money isn't going to make a difference. It is going to make a difference. I mean, ugh, God forbid. It, I just... It's fine, though, because, like, three, like, they're going to be in the DR for, like, at least a year, Right. And she won't last three months before she is bored or miserable and or before, like, the reality of a humble life, which is what he lives. I loved it when he was like, you know, we're, we're humble, hardworking people, you know? Um, that's, you know, it can be a great life, but it is not. But she keeps referring it to oh, just hanging out on the beach. No, 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 no. No, you know what? There are luxuries that, <laughs> I mean, that guy that Victor, that Ellie was with on Love in Paradise, like, he was genuinely happy being in a house with rudimentary, um, you know, amenities, Right. Danielle mm -hmm. is not going to want to live in a house with no, with no air conditioning. Nope. Um, and, you know, tap water that you can't necessarily drink. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying the entire, I'm not saying all of the DRs like this, um, but there are, you know, there are facts of life. You can't necessarily get amazon prime you you she's not going to be able to walk down the street and get her fucking 12 dollar matcha oat milk latte like yeah you might resent paying for it in new york but try going without it ever i just think and, she, she yeah yeah she's she's vastly overestimated what living there truly means it's an eight prey love fantasy and right? what it's like yeah and yeah. the other thing it's is fucking condescending bordering on racist right well yeah she she also doesn't seem to have any i have not heard her say one goddamn word about the culture there or his experience. Or his experience. Or listening or to him when he says that life in. is hard. Like, why wouldn't you believe someone that's been there their entire life? Well, she And is pretty damn keen to be somewhere else. Right. I mean, she thinks that because she's white and, you know, has um, appropriated an African religion and yeah. uh, kundalini yoga that uh everyone else is gonna buy her bullshit and all of this 
but they don't have the money there to buy that kind of bullshit, right? No. There, there is, <laughs> no one's got the money for expensive yoga lessons on the beach, right? That's just, that. those are the kind of luxuries that don't really exist where he no, comes from. No, not where he is, no. no. And, I'm and, sure there are places, and maybe she can maybe work at like a tourist resort or something. The one thing I will say, she does speak Spanish. Yes. Right? So I guess she can work there. He really probably can't really do sure. too much work in in, in but York. You're so le- you can sort of get that. But again, she's there for a year. A year is you don't need to condescend him like, oh, you haven't learned English for eight months. Like, give him the year, right? You know what else? Yeah. She's also taking for granted that uh I also I dispute that he would have trouble finding work in New York. There's lots of jobs for people who don't speak very much English. That, that's true, of course. But what I will say is that she's on his ass all the time to be making money or whatever, but there are no jobs well, that's where he point. is. That's why people want to go to America, that's because the they're point. not, you know, like... And but she just it's, it's like the Venezuela thing that we heard earlier. It's like, you know, yeah. there are no jobs. <laughs> anyway, her beliefs are not accurate, and she is the worst kind of wellness person because she uh she enjoys the spiritual bypass. She enjoys the part the aspects of spirituality that um prohibit her from having to take any accountability for her decisions Mm -hmm. or uh, for the way that she lives her life. Yeah, but true spiritual wellness requires hard work, right? Yeah. Any wellness requires hard work. Yep, and I speak from experience. It's And look, you know, we sage the house. I've got mugwort up in here, um, saltpeter, the whole nine. You know, (laughs) I believe in all of that stuff. I... But I've read so many books, and I've taken classes, and I've learned from other people. And yeah, she, but this, you also understand, like I need to work. For example, you know, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, we can, you can't live off that. Um, it was them, wasn't it? In the later on in the season, standing over the meat with the the flies. Yeah, that. Didn't... So look, it's all gonna. She's gonna see really quickly, and you know, I'm kind of here for that. Yeah, what, me too. What, what will annoy me though is she will try and shame him for what his country is, while wanting to live in a version of that country that doesn't exist. Correct. And she will, in her head, be able to reconcile those two things and have it both ways, but she can't. That is. Dominican Republic. That is what it is like outside of the resorts for many, many, many people, right? And, you know, that's, look, I don't think it's a good thing. I'd like it if no one struggled anywhere in the world. And I don't think that because you're white, um, that gives you any more right not to live in a place that is hard. It's just, if you've got the choice, geez, come on. And yeah. also, don't shit on his dream. That's the main thing. No, when when you love someone, you don't do that to them. That's not what you. That's not how you treat someone you love. And I feel like we're going to be saying that a lot. Um, well, there's our hate figure for the season. <laughs> it's always yeah. good to have one. Um, but. Think- I, I I just I can't stand these shows when they become really hateful. And she's not at the, you know, Angela, Ed, Jeffrey level. So I think I can enjoy it for a bit. I relish um an American exceptionalist yeah. uh being humbled. The Schadenfreude will be delicious. Yeah. <laughs> um anyway, I love you again, which means that um we have made it through this podcast, right? <laughs> yeah, Thank you so deal. much for listening, everyone. Thank you for listening me berate my poor, poor sainted husband. Um we we will endeavor to think of um, a little extra that we can do on this, I think, uh, for the Patreon, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so if you want more of us talking about this show, um, and of course all the others that we mentioned, do hop on over there. I am going to make fun of 
how people look and what and what they wear though yeah okay i I think we'll be a little bit less pleasant (laughs) the dirty words are coming out i'm gonna tell stories about you know my gross ex-boyfriends robin's gonna tell stories well i did on this and 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 to be honest i'm sort of regretting it but we have a never delete policy so yeah that's true and you weren't shaming her you were saying you know i I was saying that i i was intimidated that's my problem yeah not hers good luck to her and well (laughs) yeah good luck to her good luck to you all and we will see see you soon. soon